Yeah, Ebony, let's get straight into it. Um, last time we had you on the channel, you spoke to Andy, you were out stateside doing your training camp out there. I was just wondering if we could start there. Talk to us about how much you've learned out there and, and what you get out of it as well when you go out there. Uh, I've honestly learned so much. Like, it's it's unreal. If I can do what I've been doing in training and I bring it to the fight, then I, you guys will see, uh, like, uh, so many improvements. Um, you know, out there in Philly, you know, Philly footwork, we work a lot on my feet. Um, my balance and and all those kind of things you know just that fine tuning stuff like usually I go there for like two weeks three weeks at the end of my camp and it's kind of like cramming in it all but this time I was able to you know work like start like that from the beginning so um, I'm really excited. Oh, Ebony for yourself and the way the world is at the minute and the travel restrictions in and out of Australia that they say boxing is the loneliest sport in the world at times what's it been like for you being away from your loved ones for so long? Man, yeah, I mean, extremely lonely. Um, at least, like, kind of when you're at home and you're around people and, you know, loved ones and stuff, like, yes, they're still there. They still have the presence. I mean, it is always a sport that you're going to do by yourself. You have to make always make sacrifices. But um, I'd be definitely lying if I was to say that it's cool and it's easy because um, it is tough. There are some days where it's really tough. You know, I just want to see my boyfriend, give my boyfriend a hug and, like, you know what I mean, see my mom. But, you know. It is what it is, and here I am chasing my dreams, and a lot of people aren't able to do that, so it comes it comes with it. Let's go on the fight, Ebony. I, I've seen you say you expect Beck to bring the heat in this fight. you think this one's going to catch fire early? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Beck always comes out hard. You know, she always comes out strong and fast, and um, I'm a bit, a bit similar. So um, we'll see. You know, like I have my plan, um, and, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think it's going to be – yeah, I, I feel like – is going to be a bit of a, a heated fight because we both like to fight, you know. But in saying that, you know, I'm not going to get drawn into something if it's easier to just box someone, you know what I mean? So we'll see. Beck for a who's who of top names during her career. She's never been shy of taking any fight. I think she's only been stopped by Terry Harper and Tasha Jonas. Is that something you've thought about, the, the stoppage and putting your name among those who've managed to stop Beck Connolly? Um, definitely. Um, You know, I feel like if I'm able to step Beck Connolly at 118, you know, the lowest, you know, the lightest person that's ever fought her and the first time she's ever had a full camp or anywhere close to a camp, um, I think that's going to make a big impact because these girls are stopping them or fighting back when she hasn't had any preparation. So, yeah, 100% if I can stop her, it will be um, it will be a, a big, you know, point, point, you know, point to make. Um, but I'm not banking on it you know what I mean I'm, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to box and, and do what I do and you know looking hopefully break it down and stop it early final one from me Ebony uh, last time we saw you in there against Shannon Courtney I just want to ask you what that was like to process after the fight was over and the time that elapsed since because although it was a defeat you, your stock went up immensely you were given yeah. huge credit for the heart you showed it there as well was it a bit of a weird one to process afterwards no I mean um I think I was only, like, I mean, at first, I was obviously upset at first. I think, like, I mean, that night um, for, like, at, with when the results were done. Um, but it didn't take long for me to realise the impact that that fight had on people and um, the response that I got. And, you know, I don't cry over spilt milk. You know, it's it's a loss. But in life, you get so many losses and so many letdowns. You know, you got to pick yourself up and move forward and, and, and go with it. You know, and everything happens for a reason. So... I didn't really look back on it. You know, obviously I look back on what I could, you know, could do in the future and all these kind of things, but um, it's all learning for me. And I was just blessed for that experience, you know, and, and for now, like you said, my stock's going up and I was blessed that I'll be able to sh show the UK, you know, not just my fighting skills, but the heart that I have, um, which, you know, only comes when you get in those situations. So. And last one, Ebony, you mentioned the UK fans there. Uh, unlike the first fight camp, the second fight camp is going to have people in attendance. Is that yeah. a nice added incentive knowing you can be out in front of the UK fans? Oh, unreal. Honestly, I've got a, a few people I know that are going to come, you know, bought tickets to come and support me. So I'm so excited for that. Um, you know, fighting in front of fans. I love, you know, I love fighting for the fans. So to have them there, it's going to be unreal. And just the whole fight camp experience. It looks unbelievable. All right, Ebony, thank you and good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. If we go to Chris Ridgeway next, please. Hi, Ebony. How are you? Okay. I'm good. Thank you. And yourself? Yes, very well. Thanks. Just uh, just to follow on from that from that last fight, the exposure, the build up, everything. It's 
it, it was really massive. And, and, and as it was said there, your, your stock raised significantly. I guess a two part question. How has your how has your life changed since that, since, since that fight? But how have you evolved as a boxer as well? Yeah, I mean, um, life changes. I mean, not a lot, like, you know, because I kind of, after my fight, obviously, I think I noticed it the most when I was in the UK because I was walking around the streets in the UK and people were recognizing me everywhere. And, you know, that was really, you know, that was really interesting and, and really cool, like, you know, because then I'm able to take photos and, and, and engage with my fans that I do online, but in person, that was really lovely. But then obviously going back in Philadelphia into camp, you know, when I'm in camp in Philly, it's, it's literally the gym and home and a sports massage. So, you know, I don't really notice what's going on too much around. Um, I mean, obviously my social media has, has risen, which, you know, um, in turn means I get a lot more money for things, you know? So um, with, with that's the whole point of social media. That's the whole good thing about, you know, a, a big social media uh, following is that you're able to advertise for your sponsors and for, brands and things um on a wider audience so you're worth more you know so i'd say that my my stocks literally my money has risen and i'm much more um i'm worth more um so that's probably what's changed you know um other than that like nothing you know with with my training I, obviously i stayed in in philadelphia um you know to the whole camp which which was which is you know brilliant which is what i want to do um because I can work on a lot of things. The guys um, in America with Kaylee Reese, who's a two times world champion, she's my co-coach and Brian Cohen and working with those for a lot longer than a couple of weeks. Um, you know, I've, I've felt so many improvements. So I'm looking forward to showing that on this Saturday. Last week, at, <clears throat> excuse me, last week at fight camp, there was, uh, I mean, storylines left, right and center. That, that headline fight was, was amazing in the end as well. I'm guessing that you saw that. How was it for you watching fight camp thinking that's me next, next week I'm there. Yeah, well, I'm not really one of those people that gets really um, fully excited and pumped for a fight until I'm, like, there and stuff, you know, but just because boxing has let me down many times, you know. So um, I, I, I tend to be a bit reserved when it comes to, like, real hype and emotion until cl much closer to the, the date. But when I was watching that, I was like, wow, like, that's, that's unreal. And I just loved how it was so intimate and I loved how, um, you know, there wasn't, it was, it's like an exclusive, it was literally like an exclusive garden party, like festival, you know what I mean? And I, yeah. I think that's so unreal. And for the people that are coming out to actually support me, um, they're all messaging me as well going, oh my God, we can't wait. And that started to really hype me up. I was like, oh my God, I cannot wait to walk down that runway to get into that ring and just do what I love, you know, in front of people that I love and, and fans that, that love me. So yeah, very exciting. Cool. Well, that, that's it for me. All, all the best for Saturday. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. If we go to Aki next, please. All right, cheers, mate. Dan, how do you record this, mate? Because I've not done this before. No worries. I'll give you permission, mate. So all you need to do is you've got permission now, so you should be able to see a record button down the bottom. Yeah, it says, please ask host to give you permission to record on it. There you go. You should have permission now, mate. And like mm -hmm. this. Or does it is matter? That, so is that recording now? Yeah, okay, it's recording. Cool. Right, sorry about that. Ebony, hi. Uh, great to see you. Um, no, it's better like this. Sorry. Yeah, we all good. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, your last fight, you know, you actually, even though you lost, people have already touched on the fact you, you, you gained a lot of credibility, particularly battling on with such a, a bad injury. Yeah. Are you pleased in yourself that you, you, you know, you proved that you were so serious and you got the respect from the boxing public? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm... Obviously, obviously I'm pleased with myself like I, I I know what I can do so I always knew I had that I'm just pleased that I was able to draw in enough attention and draw in enough eyes pre-fight to get people to tune in to see me you know people that might not have tuned in I, I'm 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 proud of that to be able to get so many eyes onto that fight and that I was able to not only show my boxing skills and my heart you know but just that that warrior spirit that you know um really does solidify and especially you know British fans obviously you know I know that they love that kind of stuff and and I mean just boxing fans in general so yeah I mean everything happens for a reason I might not have got the one the win but I just feel like that was something really special um you know not that I would want to ask anyone to go get injured so they can do that to prove that but I think you know everything happens for a reason and um I'm I'm glad it worked out that way yeah, yeah. I mean, going into this fight, Be Beck's very tough, tough as nails. She deserves yeah. all the respect. But you, you, you do go in as the favourite for this fight. Yeah. A slightly different dynamic. You know, does that affect your preparation? Did you view it in a different way going in as a, as a solid favourite? 
No, I, you know, I mean, every fight, no matter who I'm fighting, I, I train like it's a world title fight. Even if it was like a four rounder, you know, every single um, fight for me, I train, you know, because it only takes one punch, it only takes one second. Um, so you have to take every single fight seriously and, um, you know, train hard. I always train hard. You know, I never, um, I always give it everything. I'm always the hardest worker in the gym. Um, so not really. I mean, I'm just more excited, I suppose, to go in there and, and um, get back into the UK and have the fight. As a fellow school teacher, I know that that job in particular is all about oh, patience. Yeah, yeah, it's about patience and it pushes you to the brink at times. Are you are you willing to be patient in your career and wait out for the right opportunities or are you a woman on a mission? Are you looking to get there in a hurry back to that world title contention? <laughs> Does it look like I'm patient? I've been a pro boxer for two years and look what I've done with the world. No, I'm not patient. Um, I'll push it and push it as, as hard as I can. You know, you don't get nowhere by sitting around and waiting. Um, you know, and I definitely haven't done that the last two years of my pro career. And I think that's why I'm where I am. Um, I'm also older. So, you know, I don't have time to wait around. I'm not 22. I'm not 25. I'm not 30. <laughs> I'm not going to say how old I am, but I'm, you know, I, I, I just want to have good fights. You know, obviously I'd love to fight for a world title again, but I love boxing. I love fighting. I want to have good fights. That's the main thing. You know, I just want to have good match fights, fights that I'm, I enjoy. You know what I mean? Um, that's, that's my, that's my goal. Just one final quick one, if I've got time. Um, are we expecting, um, are you going out to look for the stoppage then this, this uh, weekend? Um, I definitely, um, I, I won't, I won't, what is, how do I say it? Um, like, I'm not looking for a stoppage because, you know, I, I don't believe looking for them, um, but I won't be displeased if, if I do get it and um, I wouldn't mind an early night. So we'll see. There is the, you know, obviously there's a plan. We, we you know, we never go into a fight going, oh, I'm going to take her to the distance. Like, I don't really, that's not really a plan. But, um, you know, I know how durable um, Becky is and how experienced she is with good fighters. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not counting her out and I'm, you know, not going to get ahead of myself. But, yeah, it would definitely be something. It would be good to have an early night and get on, get into the garden and see everyone and smash some pizza. <laughs> uh, thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Aki. If you go to Stephen next, please. Yeah, hi, Ebony. How's it going? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good, good. Um, obviously, COVID will have something to do with the answer to this question, but do you have any plans um, in the future to head back to Australia to fight? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm looking to head uh, to, to fight. Well, I, I'm not too sure about fighting. I would love to fight in Australia. You know what? I would love to get a belt and, and fight in Australia, you know, for a world title or defend a title or get a world title to Australia you know I want to fight in my home country 100% you know but um boxing I mean boxing is kind of picking up in, in Australia well, was before they got that second lockdown you know um but prior to that boxing really isn't the place uh Australia really isn't a place for boxing especially not women's boxing um so you know I'm not going to sell myself short being stuck in my country just because I'm patriotic and that but yeah definitely if I can and and it, um you know it's all Worth it for me, 100% would love to fight in front of my home country. Hopefully, mm -hmm. don't get, get there and match room can get there, get some cards over there. For sure. Um, just in terms of this fight, I'm not asking for your, your game plan, obviously, but how, how do you think you will win this fight? How do you think you'll be able to, to get this victory? Yeah, I, I feel like I can, I'm going to break her down. Um, you know, I don't want to, like I've said before, you know, Becky is, is very durable, but I definitely think I'm able to stop her and I'm able to break her down. Um, do some things to her that others haven't. Um, I'm coming into this fight with a very different style to a lot of her, the, the other girls, you know, the girls that she's fought, they don't have my style. So we'll see. Hopefully break it down and get her out by the mid to later rounds. All right, thanks. No problem. Okay, we go to Joe from Seconds Out next, please. Hi, Ebony, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, only one question then, but I want to ask about Rachel Ball because I know you're kind of friendly with her. I believe you sparred at BCB with her as well. Uh, yeah. How do you see a fight between you and her going and also a rematch between her and Shannon Courtney? Um, I feel like a fight between me and Rachel would be pretty epic. Um, you know, because she's so tall and I'm a short an inside fighter, I would just be pressuring the shit out of her. Like I would just be pushing up on her. And um, it would be a very exciting fight because also she likes to let her hands go. She's very fast, um, you know, and it would just come down to, I suppose, if she's going to keep her range or she's going to sit and punch with me, you know, but I'm not going to be outboxing her. So that would definitely be one of those fights that are very exciting and I'll be on the front foot pushing up and it would be a great fight. I think I feel like that fight could be more exciting than the Shannon fight. Um, and as for her versus um, Shannon, the rematch, 
it's you know before I was like Rachel will definitely beat her um and I think she can you know um she can outwork her um because the first time they fought you know always come with COVID first fight you know blah blah, blah a lot of things but you know Rachel's had such a hard run like she's not been active she's had COVID really bad COVID um you know she's hurt her back there's so many things now that you know I think she has a skill but it's like here's Shannon getting all these you know fights and all this uh experience and whatever why you know Rachel's sick and injured so I think that sways it a bit more to Shannon um but yeah still obviously cannot rule Rachel out uh thank you no problem thanks Joy and lastly we go to Dona hey Ebony how's it going I'm good thanks how are you yeah, not too bad. Uh, you know, the last fight with Shannon, of course, there was a lot of, uh, of I don't know, political's not the right word, but like a lot of social implications to this yeah. fight. It was, it was a, uh, it's something. It, it was one of these fights where it was like it was, uh, sort of seen as a, as an historic women's fight. This one, yes. uh, you get to focus more on on simply the fighting aspect, right? No, yeah. nobody's asked once about the weigh-ins for this. Yeah. No one's asked once about uh, any of the outfits. Yeah. I get asked uh, from the daily about what color I'm wearing. <laughs> it's a million dollar question. <laughs> no, but is, yes. Is that an exciting? Uh, is, is that it's something that's exciting for you being able to, to to focus on on just boxing this time? And actually, I'll ask a, a follow up one as well. Uh, what did you think of Shannon uh, having to pull out of her fight? Um, I'm not too fussed as long as they're talking about me, as long as they're asking me questions, and with, you know, um, I don't mind the the the, the laundry talk. I mean, I feel like I wasn't really bringing it up um some of the interviews and Shani Shani was bringing it up but um I mean yeah it's great to be focused on the boxing um I think but yeah I mean I'm not fussed I'm so cruisy so yeah I don't really have much thoughts about it either way um and oh Shannon's injury um yeah I mean I don't you know I don't really have um much to say about that I suppose you know sometimes karma's a bitch but um I do hope that she does, you know, does recover fast because she's the champ and she needs to defend that belt. And, um, you know, by the looks of it, it doesn't look like it will be too much of a long recovery. She's, she's not on crutches or anything. She's walking around. So um, I see that fight happening pretty soon. Thank you very much.